Hi, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions, and in this brief video, I'm going to show you how to use ForeFlight with a flight box system. Let's start by connecting up the iPad with the flight box. To do that, tap the Settings button on your home screen to launch the Settings application. In Settings, you're going to want to go to Wi-Fi, the second option on your left-hand side. Under Wi-Fi, you'll see that we're currently not connected up to a flight box network. We're connected up to my home router. Uh, if you look down below, though, you'll see that there's a flight box network available in the Choose a Network list. So let's choose the flight box. And after a second or so, you'll see it show up as connected and no internet connection. That is completely normal. We're on a, uh, a flight box that um, isn't, of course, connected to the internet. So you'll get that every time. Don't worry about it. Doesn't cause any problems. So now that we're connected to the flight box, let's go back to the home screen. And from the home screen, we're going to launch ForeFlight. All right, here we see ForeFlight, which has some cache data uh, from before, because that's the way it works. Um, but if you look carefully, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, it says ADSB zero towers. Now that's because we're on the ground and we're not receiving any ADSB information where I'm, I'm located right now. Uh, also, if you look in the background on the map, you'll see uh, radar not available. And you'll see that uh, little indicator that says no data in the upper left-hand corner. That simply means, again, that it isn't receiving any tower data, any uh, ADSB NEXRAD radar information, so it isn't able to display it. So, in order to see what we are getting, let's tap the More button in the bottom right-hand corner of ForeFlight. And then look down on the left-hand uh, side of that. Near the bottom, you'll see the Devices. It's the next to the last item in the list. Tap on that, and it will show that ADSB is connected, and it's providing both GPS and ADSB. So tap on that, and it will give you some additional information. It indicates that the GPS position coming off of this four flight, or pardon me, off of this flight box, is valid. That's uh, that's normal if you have a, an, a GPS receiver attached to your flight box. If you have either the remote USB GPS or the GPS that's on our AHARS board, uh, that won't be there if you have uh, a flight box that does not have GPS. In which case, you're you're going to need to use either the GPS built into your tablet. Um, or something like oh, uh, a dual or a bad elf GPS. Uh, connection is valid. Um, it's showing that we're not getting any radar data and we haven't received any text updates from towers because we're not connected to any towers where we are. Um, if you look down a little further though, you'll see that we're getting data across the 978 UAT link for traffic. Now here's an odd thing about the way we interface with ForeFlight. We send all of the data across the interface that ForeFlight provides for 978-UAT. So you'll always see data coming across there, and you will never see anything on the traffic update 1090. That's totally normal. You're still getting 1090 data. We just send it all across the 978 port that they've set up for us. So um, You may also see the own ship is detected as Stratix. That's because the system is outputting the identity uh, as Stratix. Also total, totally normal. Um, if you want to be able to see where the ADSB towers are on the map, which is sometimes kind of neat to do, uh, you can tap that Show ADSB Towers, and when you're flying along and you're uh, receiving from towers, it'll actually plot them on the map for you. So let's go back to the map now, um, and we'll talk about a few other things you may need to do in order to get um, everything to display that you want. So tap Maps, and I'm going to hide the flight plan information here. And then we're going to go to this uh, sort of main category selector in the upper left-hand corner. Right now it says uh, Arrow and Category. Tap on that, and I'll show you. Uh, we've already got Radar, and then in parentheses there it's Composite. That's the one you want to have selected because that's sent over ADSB. The Radar Lowest Tilt information is not sent over ADSB at this time. You also will want to have the Traffic Indicator uh, checked, as you see here. If you, have, if you don't have that checked, it will not display any traffic. Um, there's a few other options that you may want to select. Um, you can you know, set it up to display flight category, which is what you see here. The little green dots indicate uh, VFR. The blue dots are MVFR. If there were red or pink, those would be IFR and uh, low IFR. 
uh, winds aloft, etc. So you can select whichever additional components you want. But again, you're going to want to have radar under most case, uh, circumstances and traffic under most circumstances. And the radar information will fill in once you get up to altitude and you start actually receiving ADSB data from the towers. Um, another thing you may want to do in order to, uh, to simplify your display, if you're getting all kinds of traffic that isn't relevant to you, you're starting to see airliners that are up at 35,000 feet, uh, you can hit the little uh, settings option here, and if you scroll down a ways, there's an option to hide distant traffic. And if you turn that on, you'll see that little uh, blue diamond that's on there now. It just disappeared. That's because that was an airliner up in the, uh, the flight levels, and we really don't care about that. Uh, under most circumstances. Now if you just want to make sure that you're getting traffic, you'll come in here and you'll turn high distant traffic off and it will display all the traffic information that's available. Now if we zoom in real carefully to where we are right now, I happen to be running a UAT transmitter uh, here in my office so you're able to actually see that right where we are there is a, a target. Uh, it is grayed out that indicates that that target is on the ground. It is not a moving target, and that's uh, why it shows up the way it does. So these are just a few of the things that you get out of uh, for flight with a flight box. Um, pretty simple to use. You shouldn't really have to do any configuration. Oh, one other thing to point out, if you look down there along the, uh, the line of uh, information, uh, you'll see that green 10M, 10 meters. That's showing the accuracy and you see ADSB in parents there. That just indicates that that is what it's getting from the flight box rather than from the onboard GPS, and that that's the GPS source that it's using. So, uh, once we get up in the air again, you'll get a lot more information. It'll be a lot more interesting. But that's the basics of how to use Flightbox with Forflight. Thanks.